We have some questions that fans have asked you, or have asked, I asked them if they had any questions for you, and they sent some. Um, and so I'm gonna just read them out to you. One question is, there's somebody who wonders whether you ever regretted letting me get involved in television acting. I don't think so. I'm sure, you know, there were times when I did, but over the long run, absolutely not. You always seem to be having a good time. That's really what I wanted for you. Do you remember what you used to say to me if I complained about the, my day on the set? Yes, I'd say, quit. Then what did I do? You stopped complaining. <laughs> I think complaining is like a thing on TV sets. Like it's what you do. You're no question, no question. Um, somebody was wondering about because I was so young when the show started, whether there was a sense of it like spilling over somehow into my real life. It, it's interesting. I think people ask questions like that quite a lot, which is that with like differentiating between reality and the show. Because on some level, I think the show is realer for the viewer than it is for the actor. That's that. I'm sure that's true. I remember you once saying that you were just pretending. And all little girls like to pretend. But I do know that you frequently responded, I'm just pretending. And I know that you and David Harper had a grand time just running around the set. It was like a playground for you. Was it stressful having two children and one of them working full time while you were working full time? It was extremely stressful. <laughs> What were things that made it hard? At one point, the whole family was working. Everybody had a job, including your little brother, for a while. So there were, you know, four schedules to coordinate. It, it was just complicated and very, very busy. But it was also very fulfilling. And I think we were all having a good time. I know why it was fulfilling to me. How was it fulfilling to you? Well, because I got to do my own thing, too. So if you had it to do over again, would you let your children act on television? Yes, if they wanted to. And were, did you feel like I was well cared for it on the set? Did you feel like Jeff, when he was on the set, was well cared for because you weren't able to be there? Did you worry about level of care for your kids? I really didn't. I know you've mentioned that there was always a welfare worker on set. This, the teacher was always there whether you were in school or not. They were there. Also, the cast, especially the Walton cast, were very caring for you. You were their baby, and I, I don't think you could have been more well cared for. I remember when you were little taking you to parades and stuff, and I would just turn you over to John Walmsley. I just remember just lifting you up, and he was up on the float or whatever it was, and I'd hand, him, hand you over to him. And I think about that now, think... You know, you'd be arrested for doing something like that today. But but I never worried, worried about you when you were with your Walton family. And you were always with them. I worried about you when you wanted to ride your bicycle to Vaughn's. Because you'd be by yourself and you were so recognizable. You were on the front cover of all the magazines, you know, when you were seven or eight. And I told you, you, you couldn't ride your bicycle to Vaughn's. And you said, well, all my friends do. And I said, well, you know... They're different. They're, that's a different situation. If you were doing something different off the set, then I had reason to worry, but uh, not on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, John Simmons asks, did Cammy do things around the house that just made you roll your eyes? Yes. <laughs> Such as? She was incredibly active. When she was little, she couldn't sit for more than 10 minutes. So we'd read stories every night, and she would sit on the couch next to me, and I'd read for five or 10 minutes, and She'd jump up and spend five minutes literally running around the different rooms in the house. And then she'd come back and we'd continue. But she was just extremely active and I was rolling my eyes all the time. And she was always so inquisitive about everything. And it was just one question after another to the point where I get sick of it. And I can remember when you were about three years old, I finally said to you, Cammie, you ask so many questions. And you said, Mommy, do you think I'm smart? And I said, yes, I think you're very smart. And you said, that's why I'm smart. I ask a lot of questions. So uh, there wasn't much you could answer to that. And so when I started acting, how did you think that would turn out? I didn't think it would work at all because I didn't think you had an attention span longer than 40 milliseconds. I, didn't, I was amazed that you could take direction because you couldn't take direction from me. I mean, literally, I would send you to your room, Cammie, put on your shoes and socks. And five minutes later, I'd go in and find you sitting on the floor with one foot in the air and with a sock dangling from a toe. 
and you were staring at the wall. And I literally thought at one time, maybe I should just make a recording that says, Cammy, get dressed and just put it on in your room and then send you to your room and just, it would play over and over. I, I never actually did that, so I don't know if it would have worked or not. But I do remember you having that long talk with Fielder Cook at the homecoming where you had missed your first cue. You were supposed to say a line and you were staring at the cow like you were hypnotized. And the camera was rolling and rolling and finally Fielder Cook said, cut! So all the kids were there and Fielder Cook, strode, big tall man, and he stro strode over, picked you up, carried you off to a corner of the soundstage and held you up in his arms and started talking to you and you talked right back and you had this conversation that went on maybe five minutes and the rest, the whole cast was sitting there staring because they knew how important it was. <laughs> and, and I'm thinking, well, might as well pack up because we're going home. He came back with you, put you down on the ground and they ran the scene and to my knowledge, you never missed another cue. <laughs> so I don't know what he said to you, but I would love to know. You mentioned me being really inquisitive and asking lots of questions. Was that something that you saw me do on set? Oh God, yes. Yeah. Every time I would come up there, you'd be with one of the technicians learning what they were doing. Sat in the lap of the sound man and he taught you all about the sound and you were being with the cameraman. One day I went over and, and asked the technician, I said, is she bothering you? Because I just assumed it would bother them. And he said, oh no. He said, I love it. They just love the fact that, you know, that you were interested. Sharon wants to know if I was a fussy eater when I was little. No, you would eat anything. And that was a pleasure because we could take you to all kinds of restaurants. And I remember you eating, I think it was lobster when you were maybe three and ordering frog's legs on a, a plane when you were about eight. So Susan wonders how you were able to juggle my work life with like my normal life. Well, that wasn't very hard. Your work life, you know, was nine to five or whatever. And then on the weekends, we just did normal things like norm normal families do. Well, there was a lot of weeding of the dichondra grass. The whole family was weeding. You know, we lived in Southern California. We went to the beach. We learned to ski because of your schedule because you worked all summer. So normal family vacations couldn't be taken in the summer. So we all decided we'd learn to ski. And we went up to Mammoth and to Tahoe and uh, the whole family learned to ski. And I think your dad already knew how to ski, but I never had skied. And so of course you and your brother just were skiing circles around both of us within a very short period of time. We always said it was because you didn't have far to fall. Were you surprised by how successful the show became? Yes, I think everybody was, <laughs> except Richard. Richard knew, but I think everybody else was surprised and pleased, obviously. And then how was, how different was, was I compared to Elizabeth? Well, Elizabeth was kind of whiny, I think, sometimes, but she was the baby, you know, and at home you were the older of a small family and on set you were the youngest of a, of a huge family. I, I don't, I really don't see a lot of, I don't think about it in that way. Thanks for watching and be sure to come back for part two. Hit subscribe so you don't miss the next video. A big thank you to everyone who posted questions for my mom on my Facebook page. If you aren't following my Facebook page, there's a link to it in the description below.